want all the crazy pagans and all the crazy meditators and all the, all the loonies. What they're basically doing is saying, hey folks, here's a signpost to being human again. And one of the main features of being human is to give yourself some respect. Yeah. It's dangerous for folk who want to dive in, want to give away their power, want easy answers, want a quick experience, um, because then they may get an experience, but they're not going to get something that helps them um, become more mature, more happy, more centered. Week after week this summer, I've been through therapies, healing, analysis, rituals and ceremony to the point where sometimes it seemed nothing else existed in my life. I've sat up till two o'clock in the morning discussing goddess power, planetary energy, and whether that little crystal on the string was moving of its own accord, or whether the woman was giving it a bit of a wiggle. So, has it changed me? Well, I didn't meet God, I haven't joined a cult, and I'm not planning on a group suicide or a mass shootout with the police. But actually, yeah, something did happen. Maybe I've been a bit rash by throwing myself into this every day for four weeks. Yes, it... I don't know. I mean, you, 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 the whole situation has been one of mixed throwing yourself in plus reflective scepticism on the whole thing, which is, which is the bit that's useful. It's the mm. reflective scepticism. I always tell even my own students, listen, keep your scanners on for rubbish, mm. both in yourself and out there in the people who are teaching you. Keep, mm. keep, keep your scanners on. Because reflective scepticism. Yes, it's useful. Mm. It's useful. I mean, it would be a, it would be a sad world if people, just because they became mystical path walkers, lost their sceptical reflection. Mm. The second spine I'm growing. Yes. It, start, it starts here and it comes up to about here. Did really? you know in Atlantis they had no betting shops? Oh yes, they did. I channeled recently that they had, and I won several no, really? times right on the great dragon races through the oh, cosmos. Right. Can I become your follower? Um, it will cost you. Fair enough. That's I take credit cards okay. instead. Because you're desperately seeking something doesn't mean to say it doesn't exist. The fertile bush of New South Wales teems with all manner of life, much of it malignant, some of it lethal, and all of it extremely threatening to a mollycoddled European. So it was with some trepidation that I hiked up a remote Australian hillside one warm, humid morning to be buried alive by a man called Graham. I'd asked for just one assurance, that when I wanted him to dig me out, he would. He said he'd think about it. I'd be lying if I said I was looking forward to this. To be honest, I'm uh, quite apprehensive. The hole I've got to dig is actually referred to as my grave. It's, uh, it's quite macabre imagery, really. And I've been told there are leeches. And spiders. And snakes. Dingoes. It costs $50 to get buried, 
you provide the shovel and pack lunch. It's an initiation ceremony that Graham has devised himself, based on what he says is his knowledge of Aboriginal and Central American tribal rituals, and intended to take you to a new level of spiritual awareness. It all happens on a piece of land belonging to John, who's to be buried alongside me today. My God, it's a graveyard. Stones and shrubs mark the sites of previous burials. As experienced bushmen, Graham and John know which side of a campfire to sit on. Unfortunately, I don't. Well, Peter, John, it seems like it's been a bit of an initiation just getting here with all the rain and things. Um, this next part of what's going on here this afternoon is digging your graves. Your graves are going to have to be deep enough that you can't dig yourselves out because you're releasing something of the old and you're literally creating the circumstances for something new to arise in your life. How many people have you buried? I've buried 116 people. How are people when they come out usually? They do come out, I take it. They're relieved, generally speaking. <laughs> They're intensely relieved. Um, I can be seen as a torturer insofar as I don't necessarily release people simply when they ask to be dug out. The whole purpose of initiation is to actually take you through a barrier. It involves cycles of pain and release. And the only way to move through it is by surrendering. Surrendering and surrendering and surrendering. Some people urinate in the hole and that in itself is in fact a major release that will almost invariably trigger some sort of childhood memories mm. and things and is uh, actually a very useful tool in itself mm -hmm. for releasing old stuff. Right. Glad I didn't wear the suit then. <laughs> I'm thinking that this will be my spot, actually. Um, I think I might lie facing that way, which is the east. Sunrise and all that. Uh, it's, it's kind of odd, this. I've often thought when I'm in the, when I'm in the graveyard, in the church, in the village I live in, I'm often thinking, perhaps I should pick a plot, you know? But I've somehow never been able to bring myself to do it. It seems... No, it seems too cold-blooded in some ways to go and pick your own... Your own... Ooh. Gosh, I'm going to need burying after this, I think. It's not a ten-minute job, is it? No, it's not a ten-minute job. This is generally a six-hour job, and it depends upon your own personality to some extent and the nature of the things that you are dealing with in your life as to what you call in, because all of this is simply a living expression of yourself. Graham believed that any obstacles we encountered in our digging would be symbolic of problems we were experiencing in our lives. John had very heavy problems. John was telling me that he wanted to sort of clear all the major blocks in his life, so... There's only one, one way for it to go, and that's out of the hole, because I'm going in there. Sure. <laughs> about there now. Now, I don't know what this is. I don't think we have these where I come from. But it is putting me off the thought of being in the ground with it, I think. Imagine my delight a few minutes later when I unearthed one of the most deadly spiders in Australia. Right, well, I don't think I want to be getting in there with him in there. So is that symbolic of your female web? No, that's symbolic of the pommy's fear of spiders. <laughs> no, I, I truly believe that none of these things, whether it be the big rock in the middle of John's grave or the spider in your grave,
come for no reason at all. I believe that somewhere you have actually not only drawn it to yourself for you to see on the one side, but you have also symbolically set yourself free of it without actually killing it, because a lot of people would respond and simply kill automatically because... Oh, oh no, actually, that, that never occurred yeah. to me, to kill it. Never occurred to me. But then it wasn't um, impaled on my undercarriage at the time, was yeah. it?